Hey folks, have you ever dreamed about living off grid, about creating your own power and not being reliant on big power and those ridiculous monthly energy bills? Well, if so, then you're going to have to have a basic understanding of math, a general understanding of algebra, okay? And the reason I say this is because you're going to have to size your system, okay? You're going to have to know how big a battery bank to invest in. You're going to have to know how big an inverter you're going to need. You're going to need to know how many solar panels. And the only way you will know this is if you do the math and understand the needs of your home, okay? So this past weekend, I hosted a Realities and Practices of Off-Grid Living course here at my house. We had 12 students here, and a few of them were struggling with the math. And you know what? That is perfectly understandable because they don't do algebra every day. They're not electricians, and they haven't done algebra since you know high school, which might have been 20 or 30 years ago. So what they asked is they asked if I could create a spreadsheet whereby they could just plug the numbers in and the answers they needed would just automatically appear in front of their eyes. So that's what I did. We had the course on Saturday and then on Sunday I created this spreadsheet. Now, here's the reason this spreadsheet is required. It's because every appliance in your house gives you different information. They give you different units of measure. So you have to have an understanding of a lot of electricity and a lot of math in order to make everything work. Because ultimately what we want to know is how many amp hours per day our house is going to use because we're going to need that number in order to create, in order to know how big a battery bank to buy, okay? Now let's look at a fridge, for example. A fridge is something that when you buy it, it comes with an EnerGuide card and that EnerGuide card says this fridge uses 600 watt hours per year. That's awesome, but what does that mean per day? How many amp hours per day at 24 volts does it use? You know, there's some complicated math that you have to go through to get that answer. Uh, when we look at a light bulb at the other end of the spectrum, a light bulb doesn't tell you how many watt hours per year it's going to use. That just tells you how many watts it is. And if you're using LED lights, for example, you might have an L uh, uh, a light bulb anywhere from 5 watts to 15 watts. So how do we turn those watts into understanding how many amp hours per day we're going to use? If we go down to my furnace right now, there's a blower fan on that furnace. That blower fan, it says it's 120 volts AC that uses 6 amps, okay? What does that mean? How do I take that information and turn that into a 24 volt answer at, with, uh, and we know how many amp hours a day we're going to use? Well, all of that math has been taken care of for you with this spreadsheet. So if you're watching this uh, video on YouTube right now, I thought I would share it with the world, share it with all you guys who are trying to build off-grid systems. Uh, and there will be a link to a, a Google Drive where you can download that, uh, that very spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to go over to my computer and I'm going to show you exactly how to use this spreadsheet because what you want to do when you're living off grid is you want to live a comfortable life. You don't want to live in a cave. You don't want to live in some little tree house or something. I live in Canada. There's like a couple of feet of snow outside right now and you can see I'm living a relatively comfortable life. You know, I've got a, I've got a big uh, 35 inch TV uh, computer monitor in front of me there. Over there you see I've got the, a big 55 inch LED TV with surround sound stereo. We live a comfortable life. If you were to come to my house, you wouldn't even know that I live off grid. And I want you to be able to build a system for yourself in the very same way. All right, but I don't want you to make any mistakes and I don't want you to overspend. And this sheet is going to help you do exactly that. All right, let's hop over to the computer and I will show you exactly how this spreadsheet works. All right, so here we are on my handy dandy energy calculator spreadsheet. You'll see over here on the left, we have the appliance column. In the appliance column, we've got a fridge, we've got a washing machine, a freezer, dishwasher. I try to add most of the appliances that your average home is going to have, all right? Now you can add your own down here, but uh, but these are, like I say, these are just kind of the most, the most obvious ones that you're gonna have. So if you get a fridge, when you buy your new fridge, you'll see inside the fridge or on the front door, it'll be taped is the Enter Guide, okay? And it'll tell you that this fridge uses 600 kilowatt hours per year, and it is, you know, in this range of efficiency for, the, for this size and model of fridge, right? So if you know that number, then you can just plug that in the, the, the correct uh, field, right? If you don't know that number, uh, and you've lost that yellow card, then all you need to do is go online and type in like, I've got, what do I have? I have a Maytag fridge. It's, it's old, it's like 17 years old. So I would plug in, I would just do a search for energy consumption of a 17 year old, 18 cubic foot uh, Maytag fridge, all right? And then you're gonna get a number. The internet, Google will give you a number. If you're not sure what, with that number of how accurate it is, always round up, okay? Because you don't want to undersize your system. 
So the way we're going to do this exercise to show you how the spreadsheet works, is we're going to go from the spreadsheet over to a slide that I use in my class. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> got a bit of a dry cough and hopefully I won't be coughing all over the mic here but you can see what I've asked my class to do is size this particular home with these numbers so a fridge uses 600 kilowatt hours per year a washing machine uh, 200 kilowatt hours per year freezer 500 okay and then we see over here that we've got a microwave that is a 1200 watt microwave we've got a boiler fan that uses six amps and I'm going to show you exactly how with our spreadsheet that you can uh plug all these numbers in to size your battery bank. So let's start with the fridge that's using 600 kilowatt hours per year. We'll go back to the spreadsheet and you'll see the last section is the one that you're gonna solve for watt hours per day. And to do that, you insert your kilowatt hours per year. And that was the fridge in this line that uses 600 kilowatt hours per year, right? There we go. So that's there. So we can see that the fridge is going to use 68.49 amp hours per day. And if this was the only thing I was running in the home, when you come down here to the bottom left, you can see that the grand total for energy consumption for my house is 68.49 amp hours per day. Okay. Cause that's the fridge. That's all we're, that's all we're using. And that means we need a battery bank size of 342 amp hours. Okay. But again, we just have that one appliance. So let's go through and plug in the other appliances. So we've got a washing machine that uses 200 and a freezer that uses 500. Okay, so come back to the washing machine. So again, this is over in this column. So the washing machine is 200. The freezer was 500. What else did we have? We had a dishwasher that used 300 and a well pump that used 300. So that's easy to remember. So a dishwasher that uses 300 and a well pump that uses 300. Okay, very cool. What else do we have on the list? On the list, we also have a television that uses 100 watts. Okay, so we've got a TV that, that burns 100 watts of power. So we're going to use a different field for that. So here, we're going to come over here, we're going to look up here, and we are going to solve for amps, and we're going to insert watts. Okay, see up here it says insert watts. Keep in mind that a watt is a watt is a watt. So whether you have watts at 24 volts or watts at 110 volts, it doesn't matter because a watt is a watt is a watt. So we can just go directly from our TV, which is an AC TV, okay, it's 120 volt TV, but we know that it's using 100 watts. So we just plug that in. So here we got the TV row here. So we know that it uses 100 watts. And then here's the thing we need to know how many watt, uh, amp hours per day it uses. So we need to put a time unit in there as well. So let's say on average, we watch TV for, I don't know, three hours per day. Okay, boom. And now we can see that our TV is using 12.5 amp hours per day at 24 volts. Okay, what else do we have in the exercise here? We've got a microwave that uses 1200 watts. That's uh, a lot more than the TV. So here's the microwave column. It uses 1200 watts. And again, we need to know how long we're gonna use that for. Uh, we don't have a microwave. We had one for a while there, but we just we haven't had one for probably 10 years. Haven't needed it. But uh, if you have one, I've, I, you know, you probably, I don't know what you're warming up, maybe six minutes a day, something like that. So let's say a tenth of an hour. So 0 0.1 is a tenth of an hour or six minutes. And there we go. So that's going to use five amp hours per day. Uh, let's go back to the exercise. We've got an inverter. Okay. So this is the inverter that, that um, inverts our 24 volts from our batteries to 110 volts for our house to use. Okay. So the inverter, this is where we want to solve for watts. So we're going to insert the amps. So insert amps at 24 volts. So we've got the inverter, which is using, I'm sorry about all these little noises. My phone's doing some updating. It's a pain in the butt. So it's only using one amp, but it's running for 20, my inverter runs for 24 hours a day. So that's going to use 24 amp hours per day. What else do we have in our system here? We've got the boiler fan, okay? So this is where I, was, I talked about earlier. If you go to my furnace, you'll see there's a boiler fan that says it's 120 volts at six amps. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna go back to the spreadsheet. And so here we are solving for watts, 
Okay, we're solving for watts and we're gonna insert the amps. Okay, so we've got the boiler fan and it uses six amps. Okay, it said that on the on the on the placard on the on the thing. So that's 720 watts, but we need to know how many hours the uh, that boiler fan is going to be running. And you know what? I honestly don't know how long my bo my furnace or my boiler runs every day, but let's uh, let's say it runs for an hour and a half in total. Okay, 1.5 hours. So we're seeing that that uses 45 amp hours per day. Now let's go back to this thing. We're almost done. Lighting. Okay, here's something where you're going to have to do a little bit of thinking on your own. So. Like up there, I've got I've got pretty much all eleven, I've got all eleven watt light bulbs, and I've got I've, I've got different banks. I've got three bank, a bank of three there, a bank of three there, and a bank of four there. I usually only have three on at a time though, so that's three times thirty three, so three times eleven, which equals thirty three. So, sorry, so <coughs> so I'm inserting the watts, right? So I've got three eleven watt light bulbs. Um, so three times three, so that means I'm inserting my watts under lighting. So I'm inserting 33 watts. And in the winter, it's dark here, right? From uh, whatever, from, from, from like five o'clock till I go to bed at nine o'clock. But let's say, let's say an extra hour. Oh, maybe some time in the morning. So let's say five to 11, so six hours, okay? So I'm doing that for six hours. And so you can see that's using 8.25 uh, amp hours per day. So see how you have to sort of do the math here? Like this is actually, so thinking about this, okay, I might be in here uh, with these lights on, but where's Monique? Okay, Monique might be having a shower. So she's got, you know, she's got the, um, the lights on in the bathroom. So that might be more. So let's, let's just, to be safe, let's just throw that up to 50 amps, okay? Or 50 uh, watts. So we're, we might be burning 50 watts at once. Again, that's a, probably a little bit high, but at the same time, I'd rather be high than <laughs> I'd rather be high than not high. I'd rather be high than low on my numbers. What else do we got? Pool pump. So we used to have a pool here when I first made the sheet. I uh, I made a I, I included the pool pump. So the pool pump. Oh, I took that off. So let's add a pool pump here. So pool pump and so what do we know about the pool pump we know that the pool pump uses eight amps so we're back to the same section as we were last time so we're inserting amps so we're solving for watts because we know the pool pump is 120 volt uh, uh pump and it uses eight amps so here we go let's include eight amps there and let's say we run that for 12 hours per day look at that 480 amp hours per day that's why we don't have a pool anymore. And that's why the spreadsheet's so handy because now we can see, you know, look at the numbers I've, I've been creating here. A 24, 1250, 1250, 45, right? Even the big stuff here, 68, 22, 57, 34, 34. And then we've got 480. So that, so that, so that's, you know what? Let's not, let's not have a pool pump. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it there because, and I'll show you why. So let's just do the last one here. The last one is the computer, which is using 30 watts. So we want to insert watts. That's over here. So we got the computer and we are inserting our watts. So we've got 30 watts. <clears throat> How long is the computer on in a day? Let's say it's on for four hours. And there we go. So again, we're just using five amp hours per day. So that concludes the exercise here, right? So for this house, how big a battery bank do we need? Well, we are burning uh, 800 amp hours per day, which means we need a huge 4,000 amp hour battery bank. That's, that's quite big. My battery bank is, uh, is 1,200 amp hours. So let's get rid of the pool pump. Let's get rid of the pool pump. Where is the pool pump? Boom, let's get rid of, what do we add? Put that amps in there, right? So we'll delete that, we'll delete that. And there we go. So now you can see how we're now only using 320 amp hours per day and that we have a battery bank sized at 1600 amp hours. Like I say, so my battery bank is 1200 amp hours. So it'd be just, you know, marginally small for this system, but it would still work. Now, you might be asking yourself where, how this number is created and when you've got a, if you're using a lead acid battery bank, and most people are going to be using a lead acid battery bank, they're just uh, the most prolific, they're most affordable, they last a long time. My battery bank, I'm actually replacing this week, but it's 17 years old, right? So, so Bob's your uncle, I'm not, I, I have no complaints about that. 
But the reason my battery bank lasted for 17 years is because I tried to never uh, deplete it more than 20%. So my batteries are always at 80% capacity or more. So here, this 320 amp hours per day, that's, that's a winter day, right? Because that's where we're including the boiler. That's where we have the lights on for the longest. So that's, <coughs> so that's you know, so this is a winter day. So in the summer, we wouldn't be using anywhere near this amount of power. But anyway, because again, I want to be uh, I want to be conservative in my in the size of my battery bank that, and I don't want to undersize it. Then what I do is I take this number, the 320, and I multiply that by five. And if you multiply that by five, you're going to get 1604. The reason you multiply it by five is because when you divide 320 into 1684, that's going to leave you with 80% uh, charge left in your battery. So you're only going to deplete it 20%. Now. You can go a little bit lower. You can go to 70%. I wouldn't go much lower than 70% on a daily basis. And again, keep in mind that I probably shouldn't be teaching my entire course here. I was just showing you how to use the screen, but I wanted to explain the battery bank sizing. And what you want to do here is understand that, what was I saying? Oh yeah, again, this is for like three months of the year, like December, January, February, when we're in the heart of winter here in Canada. So that's when we're using the most power. So for nine months out of the year, uh, this battery bank would be, whoa, where did that come from? So for nine months out of the year, this uh, battery bank is going to be way bigger than you actually need. And so that's why well, if you size it this way, you're going to have a battery bank that's going to last you for 10, 12, 15, 17 years. All right, guys. So the link to um, to get this spreadsheet for yourself is in the is in the description below. So click on that. If you found value, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. All right, guys. I hope you found this interesting and valuable. And I hope you get really good use out of the spreadsheet and are, are able to use it to build a, uh, a an off grid home that is sized for your needs. All right, guys. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.